welcome back to Rough Draft, episode two. It's the show about writing where we're going to share everything we know about writing and everything that we plan on learning. And we'd also like to welcome back Christopher Sean from Everybody Has a Story podcast. He is joining us once again, and we hope that he can continue to pop in every once in a while. Thank you for coming, Chris. You're welcome. As usual, I always love engaging with you because with your new book coming out, Ah, it's exciting, yeah. and I love it, and so just getting to know you better, I think, is, is awesome, so oh, thanks thank for you. having me on the show. <laughs> thank you. Again. Again. Okay, so episode two is going to be about overcoming fears of failure, which happens to everybody, no matter what you choose to do in life. Okay. So, Christopher here is going to shoot out some questions, we're going to get into the topic. All right, let's do it. <laughs> My first question is, how did you decide uh, to become a writer? I don't think I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I always, I was always a creative child. Like, I always wrote little stories, and I guess you, I was one of those kids that had their head in the clouds at all times. But as, like, career-wise, I never felt like writing was, like, a legitimate course of a career that I could take so I went into business management I have a bachelor's in business management and then I come to find out that I have this talent and I'm like I should have developed this talent I should have gone to school and developed this talent <laughs> and I didn't really believe that I had it until you know I started getting all this feedback from people saying oh my gosh I love your book I want the next chapter it, it the way you write it makes it flow like a movie through my mind. And then I was like, well, well maybe, maybe it's not so bad, you know? Maybe I don't need to go to school for writing, though it probably could help. But um, so I think maybe right now I decided that I'm a writer. Now, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that, you but, know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally understand. Uh, like, like you said, I started a podcast called Everybody Has a Story. Well, same as you. I didn't just... I know I'm going to do this and been doing this, you know, since after high school. It's like I looked at how can I feed my family? How can I provide? And, yeah. you know, any of the arts, whether, you know, a musician, a writer, you know, you kind of go, uh, you know, I need a backup plan. Oh, uh, what if I'm not good enough? Or, you don't, you don't think to go down that path, you yeah. know, but you find yourself on the path and your passion speaks loud. So I think that's amazing. Now, because... You didn't start off on that path. And, and because, you know, getting going and you're getting going late and you're just like, oh, I know you kind of feel that. <laughs> like, I, I know I'm a writer because I wrote a book, but I don't feel like a writer because I didn't go to school for it. So how do you overcome, like, your, your fears of failure and things like that? Um, it's really hard because, I mean, people don't like change. And coming on even the show, or like even a year ago, I wouldn't even talk about my book to anyone. I thought, oh, I'm going to write this story. I love this story. Um, my, and my husband, I shared it with him, and he loved the, short, the, the story. But it was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be one of those nice little stories, that paper copy stuck in a folder, <laughs> like right on my desk. And it'll be great for my kids to read when they get older. I never, I never thought of letting anybody else read it because I didn't have that confidence in myself. Right. Um, but I'm also not the type of person where I like to allow fear to control me. And so I'm like, well, why not try? I mean, if you don't try, are you going to hold that against yourself? You know? And so as I've gone through it, there have been times when I've had serious panic attacks and I'm like, okay, okay, we're going to work through this. <laughs> It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Somebody's going to hate it. Just <laughs> just get to the point where you know that somebody's going to hate it and be like, "Okay, because not everything is for everybody." Right. You know. So I'm going to expect that some people love it, I'm going to expect that some people hate it, and I, and you just have to be willing to continue to move on and to work through your your feelings. Right. And so that's kind of what I've done. I've taken it day by day, step by step, and I've landed here. <laughs> <laughs> what happens after here? We'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's real inspiring because there's a lot of people out there, like we mentioned, that 
don't follow their passions mm -hmm. and may find themselves in the same situation as you or I, you know, okay, full circle. I came full circle and whatever I tried didn't work out, didn't capture me, didn't hold me. And now I'm here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's real inspiring that you can overcome your fears and, and things like that. So for people that's like you, uh, a mother raising a family, you know, three kids, how do you find time to write? How do you find time to put yourself in the role that you should have been in? Ooh, it's, uh, it's hard. Because when you sit down to write, it's like you've got to get into that creative mode. Right. And it's really hard when you're writing and all of a sudden it's like, Mom, I need this. Mom, I need that. Mom, I'm hungry. <laughs> mom, 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 mom. And I'm just like, oh, I don't, I can't think. I can't process any thoughts. And, and that's for me, it's like I have to get into that creative mode. And so I like to call it time out. Right. <laughs> time out. Mom's going to time out. <laughs> and a lot of naps. You're right. <laughs> it's nap time. It's nap what do you time. Mean? Mandatory nap time. Go to bed. We just woke up. Go back to sleep. But like I said, this did take me four years to write. So, right. and it's what, like a 90,000 word paper. So, but during that time, I. I got a bachelor's degree, I had two children, I had a miscarriage, you know, my husband got a uh, bachelor's degree, and uh, like I said, the whole economy thing happened, and right. so it was any time that I could get just to sit down and, and to plink down my right. thoughts onto paper was, was what I did, and um, any, every second counts, I guess. But there was a point in time where I was like, where I came to terms with, you know, this is actually really good and I think it can go somewhere. That means I have to actually finish it and get to the end. Like, I've got to work right. on it. Like, I've got to really start developing as a writer and, and put myself more into this book. And do, do you find that, um, like, when you do find time to write and you're going through all these stressful things that you mentioned, economy, you know, miscarriage, and different things like that. Do you feel like your your writing is kind of like like therapy for that, and it kind of brings you back to it? Because some people could just not find the time and just you know I really like this book and push it to the side, but you know. It, yeah, no, it was. I, I think I mentioned that in the first uh, episode that it really was therapy for me to be able to just express my creative thoughts and feelings and pour my emotion into the characters and and uh, the story and the plot, it, it really did help me through everything that, that happened those, those four years. Thank goodness for it. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's cheaper well, than actually paying for, yeah. <laughs> for therapy. Right. Please, everyone, just get out of your computers and start writing. <laughs> yeah. But don't post it on Facebook. No. <laughs> Just right, okay? Matter of fact, maybe don't put it on your computer. Write it down on paper first. You might want to light a match and burn it afterwards. <laughs> Husband gets on your nerves. is like, okay, I'm going to write this fight scene. <laughs> I walk into a bar. Ah! It, but it is so true. You know, you're, when you're right, your feelings that are going out do end up going into your writing. Right, right. You know, so that is true statement. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. As usual, I mean, just, just coming on the show is great. And, you know, I'm glad that you're sharing this writing process. Who knows? Maybe I may try writing. Go for it. Hey, everyone has something to share, right? And everyone has a story. <laughs> well, we thank you again for being with us. Once again, where do we find you, Chris? He has show. Everybody has a story. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere. <laughs> It'll pop up here, it'll pop up here, it'll pop up there, it'll pop up here, it'll be right here. Did I just take over your show with my pop-ups? Just a little. Oh, uh, take it all down. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also e uh, email us at darkeveseries at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments about the show, um, join us and support us by liking our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash thedarkeve. Also, we're going to be having our sharing contest where you win a poster and you will get the first chapter of the book to read. So if that's not a incentive, in, an incentive for you, I mean, I think that's exciting. And please subscribe to our YouTube um, channel and keep following us. Thanks. <laughs>